If we can, let's go ahead and have a seat. All righty. Mr. Shields, where are you? All right. All right, let's go ahead and finish this meeting up. I don't think we have a whole lot to do. Why don't we go ahead and bang it out if we can? Uh, the next portion of our meeting talks about our appointments. Um, is there any request from our regional partners to uh, reappoint? I imagine there are one or two that need formal reappointment. Is that the purpose of uh, this item being on the agenda? Yeah, they typically uh, want a reappointment, and um, I think most of them are asking for them by mid-January or earlier. So this is what's uh, laid out here, are all the current employee uh, appointments to the regional um, organizations. That's the first item. And so if there are any changes to those, I don't know those need to be hashed out at this meeting, but before your meeting on January 9th, if you do have any ads or deletes, then we would want to work through those. All right, so is there anybody who, want, who wants to either get off or get on something they're on? Okay. All right, that's pretty simple. What else? I'm looking here at the Region Forward Coalition. I thought I was the current 2016 appointee. You are. Okay, so that's wrong. I'm happy to do it again in oh. 2017. All right. Um, I just did a year correction. there. <clears throat> it's uh yeah, it's on the Cog one, page four of six. Okay. And I'm happy to continue that. All righty. Any other changes, corrections, edits? Okay. Anything else to be said on this item? So Dan Z would come off of Region Forward, just so we're clear on that? I think he did a year ago. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. And, yeah. All righty. Anything else on this item? That's it. Okay. What else we got tonight? Let's take a look. We have a, a request from Councilmember Snyder to review a, um, a letter that is in draft form. Yes. Are we also talking about the meetings and work sessions? Is that, I, I just, sorry, it was the next thing in the packet. We weren't, uh, our, uh, did did yes, we also already the do the council like. appointments and, oh, we haven't done that, okay. Well, we, I'm, I'm sorry. That was the idea, is that if you had any issues with oh, your appointments, in, let it be known. Including the, I thought you were talking about the regional group. Uh, well, we can talk about any of them. Do you have any issues? I just any? wondered uh, if the planning commission, uh, I know, Mr. Mayor, you're the liaison to that group. Uh, it's a fictional position. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what does that they mean? They meet at the same time. I know, so they, meet I know. At the, they usually meet at the same time. So what if does it only mean? I'm happy to replace them on, on that. <laughs> well, that's why I was going to volunteer to actually. No, I'm I'm half serious. I mean, is there any? I'm I'm actually a little more than half serious. I mean, well, I don't is think. There, is there any way to you know have a liaison relationship with the planning commission that does not involve going to their meetings, which is challenging for us to do? And and is this anything that you would think about, or what 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 does it mean? Well, to, it what does it mean to have a council liaison to the planning commission? <laughs> is my question. well, I guess I think the, the essence of your question is, can they change the date of their meetings? Is that I, I no, no, I've you know I've fought and lost that fight, but, but I'm I'm having moved beyond that. You know, do we have a plan for liaison. communicating with the planning commission in 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 a setting other than? A formal meeting and you know meeting them in the hallway It's clearly in bargaining phase you need to get to the acceptance phase quickly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well look I mean we don't have a big plan I think it's more informal than uh, maybe you would desire uh, but I'm certainly happy to relinquish that spot if you you know to, uh, no, no, you should do it okay all right <laughs> Just wanted to so let me ask uh, uh, Mary Beth Connolly uh, <coughs> are we just flipping am I supporting you or you just want to yeah, I mean, you know, it makes sense. If you want to. Well, you're going to, though. I've been going, yeah. Yeah, right. So, do you want to be an ultra? <clears throat> well, you know, I've been to a few of those myself, okay. so. But. All right, so why Dan's going to be an alternate for the COG region forward. Okay. So we'll just look at Yes. All right, what else do we have on these? Anything else? I just have one other thing, and that is that when we were at the uh, VML conference in, I think that was September? It just seems like. October, was it October? Um, there were a lot of 
our colleagues on other councils and boards that serve on VML committees. And I didn't see any of us serving as official VML committee people. And I don't know, or, except Dan. Dan is. Dan, Dan is, sorry, Dan is. The rest of us are not. So I'm just wondering if we should do that to make our presence more present, to add another meeting to our lives. But I just think that's something that we need to explore, and I'm not quite sure how to actually do that. It's how probably a good idea. It is a good idea. They send out a solicitation on um, some sort of a regular basis. I haven't seen it yet this year. They typically meet like in that June and summer months. And uh, what so happened to that? Like, I, I did that the first year. I, yeah. I was on the economic. I went down to Richmond in July for an economic development meeting. I forgot. We didn't go the next year. Is it an annual thing? You have to re up every year? We get reappointed. Okay, yeah. I can follow it's usually not a vote. I think the mayor signs the letter and, um, and then the appointments go off. Okay, I think that's a good idea. It would help on visibility and legislation. I'll follow up and see when they're going to call, put out the nomination. All righty, anything else on this item? We can do schedule, although I think schedule is scheduled for last, right? Yeah. So why don't we go on to the Met will model letter and then um, and then go to schedule at the end. Dave, Mr. Snyder, what you got? Thanks much. Um, it's this, do you, the NVTC letter. Um, I know various copies are making their way around the table. Why don't we wait a minute to make sure everybody has. Yeah, there should be three. One's the MVTC letter. One's a print of the PowerPoint that you saw before. Oh, we've got six PowerPoints, but no letter. Oh, oh here. Oh. And the third item is the MVTC Sorry. public hearings on WMATA. The so PowerPoint are the slides that you saw in the December financial briefing just to refresh the WMATA numbers before you this evening. So the reason why I'm, I'm really sort of I'm bringing this to you tonight is that on Thursday, NVTC has a letter going into WMATA. And the first thing that caught my attention is the very first bullet supports the proposed FY 2018 operating budget, including a reasonable increase in jurisdictional subsidies, which goes back to what is the city paying on a gross basis, including non-city revenues? What is the city paying on a net basis? That is money which increasingly is going to come out of our operating budgets to cover what in the past had been covered almost totally by, by funding from federal and state sources. And how do we feel about this level of city commitment to a system that a we don't have a we don't have a um, station in the city, so b we've seen very little direct development uh, and related tax revenues, c they've reduced bus service. Um, and D, so far, they've been not really forthcoming in terms of the development of GMHS site. So these are all issues which I want to present. I, again, there's no particular decision tonight, but uh, I'll turn it over to Cindy to tell us what is the net city contribution, not just the increase, but how much are our taxpayers paying every year directly for Metro, and is this still a bargain which we think is of value? And then the next question is this letter from NVTC, I agree with a lot of it, but when I read that first bullet, it's like, I'm not sure I support any uh, jurisdictional uh, subsidy increase. So in any event, um, Cindy, maybe you can take it away from here and just help us through the basic numbers so people have the background, and then I'll take whatever guidance council would like to give on whether we sign on to this letter or not, or whether we agree with it. Thank you, Mr. Schneider. Yeah, before the vote on Thursday, if council wants edits to the letter, then those can be forwarded and Mr. Schneider can carry that. The numbers that I can speak to tonight are one, the CEO's proposed budget, so they haven't been totally um, finalized in terms of public hearing and board discussion. And these numbers do not have all of our offset by state and gas tax. Um, housing trust monies because that stuff even though I had an hour conference call today on it will not be finalized till towards the end of January so um, from a 
total gross operating, this is for not the capital, just running of the system, the city's contribution is <coughs> about um, 2.6 million, 2.7. That's approximately a 300,000 increase going into the FY18 budget. Once again, this is gross, that's not total local dollars because there is state and gas tax money in there. Then for capital, for FY18, um, there's about three pots of money that make up the capital for systems performance and a lot of the new capital will be for rail, not station um, expansion. Some of the rail would be for higher power lines and rail cars. That is about 1.9 million capital per year for the city's total gross dollar amount. We are estimating the increase um, on the capital to be about 200,000. So right now about 300,000 is the estimated increase gross for WMATA. Some of that will be offset by state DRPT funding and gas tax, but those exact dollars, we don't have details. And then there's some uh, potential uh, additional one million in debt that could be around 131 to 175. So right now, uh, Melissa Ryman is estimating between 500 to 650 thousand increase to the local budget that won't be offset by other sources. So, uh, let me sort just, of worst case scenario. Yeah, so let me let me just try to get get down to so next year in next year's budget. We estimate that the city's financial obligation to Metro for FY18 will be roughly $4.5 million, some of which we hope will be offset, a, hopefully a significant amount, from state and federal monies. But I think the question pertains is to whether this, at more than 10 cents on our tax rate, is something within our interest to continue to maintain. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> um, you know, that's a very good way of framing up the issue. It's uh, four and a half million dollars is uh, more like 12 cents on the tax rate. Um, is this the same metro that until recently uh, had to go and, and use some of this money to finance uh, uh, their operations because their county was in such a dismal shape that they couldn't? Uh, draw on the federal funds available. Uh, the same metro that, um, that ha is, has proven to be so unreliable both in terms of operations as well as self-imposing efficiencies that I can tell you I could fly from here to Charlottesville faster than go across the river to go downtown. The metro ought to be the lifeblood of, of our public uh, transportation strategies. And I just don't think they're trying hard enough. I mean, this clown clown board they have are threatening to, uh, well, let's just forget about expanding the Silver Line if they don't give us the money. So that kind of brinkmanship uh, just irks me to no end. And uh, I will vote against any increase in the upcoming budget. And if you need some input this Thursday, you can tell them you have one very angry Congress uh, council member. Hey, um, so my calculation is that this is four to six percent of our budget. I had a different number than yeah. Dave did. We, we, need, we need to, to, I think it should be viewed as what, what do our, lo, what's in our budget for WMATA? Because of that three million that we currently pay, most of that is DRPT and gas tax funds. And now the gas taxes are paid by our cit citizens, and we pay state taxes as well. But in terms of our budget, um, it's closer currently to about two cents on the tax rate, and that's going to go up by another five hundred thousand. So we're approaching going from two cents to four cents on the tax rate for our uh, budgeted WMATA subsidy. I think that's a, a closer discussion of the numbers. Now, one of the big concerns is if you look at their capital program. The way it's modeled right now, that could grow to nine cents uh, pretty quickly. Um, that has not yet been adopted, but that's the way it's modeled right now in terms of their their budget. 
So two cents today, this next year's budget is going to be about four cents, and then it looks like nine cents if you look at their capital program. Ms. Hardy? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't, sorry. I thought you were done. I, no, I, I, you didn't have I hand was, up. no, I did, and then Mr. <laughs> Shields jumped in, and I just wanted to finish the thought that I was actually trying to make, because the, what the number is, I was trying to look at it on a percentage basis, what percentage of our budget is it, and I was just curious whether that was comparable to our neighbors, because I didn't know whether as a small jurisdiction we were impacted either favorably or unfavorably by the formula that allocates those costs. Um, we, we can get that information, and I, and I think it's useful actually for all of our neighbors to translate it into pennies on the tax rate also, because we all kind of, that's actually a pretty good comparable metric for everybody. Um, but we can get that, we can get that breakdown. I would like to say that in general, we are better because we have the home hold harmless allocation and we don't have riders originating in and out. So proportionally, the overall system went, budget went up by 15%. The impact to City of Falls Church was 10%. So as a general rule. Yes. Sorry, yes. Sorry. Uh, so I just had a more rudimentary question. I guess what's the alternative? Can we not pay WMATA? Like, is that really an option? I think that's the alternative. If enough jurisdictions say enough is enough, and it's clear that 30% of the riders are federal work, workers going back and forth, the feds need to step up. All right, why don't we go ahead? Is there, is there consensus to just recommend deletion of the first bullet point? And I not think so. some, All right. Well, why don't we go ahead and make recommend that change or request that change and see what happens? And are, are we taking that bullet point out, or are we saying no increase to to jurisdictional subsidies? I mean, like if you take out a reasonable increase, are you saying you want an unreasonable increase? Well, that's supporting a reasonable increase to me. I mean, taking it out is kind of I, look. I, that would be my. I think that would be less likely to be supportive of an increase if you took the whole thing out. Well, Mayor, you're more than welcome to pay my fair share. <laughs> okay. Well, well, I mean, the other alternative is put a bullet that says we support no increase. I, I don't think that's probably going to be likely of uh, consensus of the group, but Mr. Snyder could probably tell us better a bullet point that said we support no increase to, I mean. Well, you know, some of the jurisdictions have a direct benefit from Metro. I mean, Arlington clearly does, sure. Alexandria clearly sure. does, Fairfax County clearly does, Falls Church clearly doesn't. <laughs> I got it, but that's what I'm saying is in terms I of... I mean, that, that's the part that I... I'm sorry, I haven't raised my hand. What is this a work session or were you no, like... Well, go ahead. You I raised mean, both your hands so. I mean, I've deferred to Mr. Snyder's decades of experience in this area, but, you know, we're a transit-dependent suburb. That's why I moved here in 1985 because Metro was in walking distance of my house. I mean, we, we, our future uh, is inextricably linked to the success of the metro system. I agree it's a hot mess now, but we we got to make this thing work. We've got to get this thing, we got to do whatever we can to get this system functioning again so that, you know, I can drop my wife off up at West Falls Church instead of driving her to East Falls Church because the trains don't run to West Falls Church anymore. Uh, you know, I mean, there was something in the paper over the weekend about, you know, the further out suburbs are projected not to grow as robustly uh, in the coming decade because traffic is just, you know, such a hassle to get in from McLean even or certainly further out. Uh, but the close-in suburbs, the prospects for growth are good because they are transit dependent. I mean, I, I don't have any solutions, but we, we've got to stay at the table, I think, at Metro, and we've got to hold their feet to the fire on all the other bullet points, which I think are good. And certainly, Mr. Z's right that they're probably Metro shouldn't be the only transit system that <laughs> has no funding mechanism. Um, and I'm not sure what the best way is to make that happen. If the if the point of the letter is to you know pound on the table and and get attention to you know encourage discussion about a new funding mechanism, well, I, yeah, we should do that. But I think we we want to to align ourselves with the notion 
in the development community that we are accessible to Metro and we're trying to make ourselves more accessible. Okay, well, so go ahead. I just had one suggestion. Yeah, Perhaps we could work on suggestions, work with Councilmember Snyder on suggestions to the letter. What if a, a basic approach was <coughs> similar to your budget guidance that you adopted two months ago uh, or a month ago, which stated, in light of our significant capital needs, discipline is appropriate on the operating side. And if that basic message were conveyed to WMATA as well, that there's no question that the subsidy is going to go up because of the capital. Uh, that's probably a necessary investment. The a compact could be we're going to be really strong on the operating budget in order to create space financially for the capital. It, what they're asking for is a 10 percent increase in the operating as well as an incredible uh, program on the, uh, I'm sorry, a 10 percent on the operating in a, in a really big increase on the capital that's projected out for the next 10 years. Vice Mayor Connolly. The paragraph here on the back, the second to last paragraph, kind of says that. It, it does. I'm, I'm concerned. I would su suggest that it, that the way that these bullets in the front, it kind of weakens that part in the back. If the main thrust was this is really what we're concerned about, so that's why these need the way it's phrased as we support. Uh, maybe that could just be recharacterized and and make it a little bit stronger. Now that's, this is a letter. That might not be where Mr. Snyder was going with this, but if it, if it were about wordsmithing. We could work in that direction. I mean, this isn't our letter. This is a regional letter that I imagine, I don't know how many people are, are voting members of NVTC, but we are one of those. So I don't think we can really rewrite the letter, right? Or basically, we can offer some input on how to change it. But I don't think it probably is a good use of our time rewriting this entire letter because I, I think it's unlikely to be fully adopted by the body. But Mr. Snyder probably could elaborate on the best way forward with that. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. I, the, the big thing, I, th I think the letter reads okay. I think we, we need to get better numbers. We need to discuss it as a council, how hard and how fast we want to go in various areas. And I, you know, I agree with, with, uh, with Phil that we've been a long time participant with Metro, but they need to start showing more value to us than they've shown so far. Uh, regardless of what the level of funding is. And then you look at increased funding, and then you look at this, clearly there's a statement here, it's okay to increase jurisdictional subsidies. Well, in my view, it's not okay. And that's, that's what got my attention. So um, I think I'm hearing people, um, but I think it's a discussion for later on, um, but I wanted to begin to, to, to get that discussion going with this letter, and I thought I'd raise the, the point. So Great. my... My point would be that I don't think NVTC ought to endorse an increase in jurisdictional subsidies at this point. Um, and we'll see how far I get with that. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, keep, us, then? keep us in the loop. Thank you for your good work. Let's move on to the next item, which is council schedule and requests. So, Ms. Oliver, did you have some comments on schedule? Yeah, I just wanted, well, I just have my chronic comments. I know there are some members of council that would like to table the fiscal policies until July. The motion says that we would bring it back in January, and I don't immediately see it on the calendar in January. So I just, in work session, wanted to get clarity around whether a majority of people wanted to ignore it for the time being or whether we wanted to go ahead and take a decision on it one way or the other. We don't have to approve the changes. Okay, thoughts? Any thoughts? Are we ignoring the, okay, request for? So putting aside the components of the fiscal policies that were for flexibility for the school campus. I think there were other changes in there that may be important for the budget. So the pay-as-you-go component, for example, <coughs> I think might have budget, FY18 budget implications if we adopted it. So is that, is that the one, more important part that we need to talk about? Because I know people's hang-ups are really about the financing options and flexibility for the high school. 
but if there's other parts of the fiscal policies that actually need to get talked about or and or <coughs> sooner then we should do that sooner okay other thoughts mr duncan uh i'd have to refresh my memory from the meeting that i went to in december i, I was attracted by something the manager said at that meeting i think which was you know our uh our whole approach on fiscal policies is maybe getting too much down in the weeds that this really wasn't i don't want to put words in your mouth but but that the lens through which we're looking is that itself could be a topic of discussion and maybe something much less specific um, <clears throat> would be something so if we were <coughs> going to be able to talk about that sometime uh, that would be interesting I think in January or later I mean okay I, I so my point is, I would like the proposal that's on the table to be accepted or rejected. If people feel that it needs more work, then they can reject it or we can agree to table it for later. But I, I just, I feel like we're kind of hanging here and I, I just want the majority of council to give budget and finance some direction about where we're going with this. So are you saying you basically want an up or down on the whole thing? You don't want to deal with parts of it? I'm prepared to do up and down on the whole thing or to to vote on an amended version of it, but there needs to be a discussion and people need to say what they're prepared to vote on or not prepared to vote on. I think that in essence, if we, um, you know, our policy actually says that we're supposed to review this every two years, so we're actually kind of late on reviewing this. It should have been reviewed right after the election, so it should have been reviewed by March of last year. Um, but I, you know, in essence, if, if we, if what people want to say is we don't want to change what we have right now, then let's just take that vote and say we are reaffirming our current fiscal policies with no changes. It affects the budget process a great deal, you know. So I'm just asking people if, if we're prepared to say we want to stick with our current policies and not make any changes, or whether we want to bring this back at the work session on the 17th and have a discussion about what revised version of policy we would be prepared to vote on the following week. I think it's a good idea to have a discussion on the 17th. I think there was a, some confusion among all of us of does adopting a policy instantly mean there's a four cent tax hike? And I think we really need to talk that one over a little bit and understand exactly what that means um, policy-wise. So I would be happy to talk about it on the 17th and uh, if people, because everyone had questions on it and everyone had some ups and downs on it. So if we're all prepared to come back and have a robust discussion, I think that's a good idea. Any other thoughts? Okay, well, why don't we go ahead and do that then? Why don't we have a discussion with the idea that we'll hopefully advance the ball um, and uh, see where it takes us on the 17th. Okay, any other uh, scheduling issues, requests, comments? Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes. The Mr. Manager of the Budget, I'm sorry, the Economic Development Committee meeting was scheduled for. Is that what we settled on? Ms. Hardy, is that? Was oh, it's, uh, January 19th. I did too. I, 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 I'm looking at the 19th and I'm thinking that we're, we're supposed to be there and. <laughs> so that's that's where I was going. Spelled EDC correctly. So. Friday the nineteenth at eleven thirty. Thursday. 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 Uh, sorry, Thursday. Wait, yeah. Friday is listed as the nineteenth yeah. for the budget. Okay, so we're talking Thursday, January nineteenth at eleven thirty for the EDC. Okay. Finance that their normal meeting is on a holiday. Mm-hmm. Right.
Okay, anything else? Schedule, requests, comments? Uh, just a question about um, our contract with Link that is wrapping up, and I'm not quite sure where we go next, if that's a conversation for the next working group or how that all works, but it seems like there's a lot of work still to do on that one. There is. Um, I was planning to poll members offline so there's doesn't need to be so people could be frank with their views positive and negative and then uh, uh, try to relay back that information back to everybody and, and try to push a decision that way okay other comments questions? suggest that we're not frank with our views in public <laughs> yeah really um, no I'm just giving you a hard time uh, the uh, Event on uh, Martin Luther King Day. Uh, see, that's a twelve thirty start. Is that what folks had on their account? I thought I had one o'clock on mine. Stop. I'll be meeting with uh, Mr. Henderson, Mr. Boston Thursday afternoon to firm up the time. Okay. Um, they were talking about twelve thirty or one starting at the Arch, so we went with the earlier time. So ah, you'd be, to be prepared. Safe. <laughs> okay. All right. But we'll be talking the details of the march and the program at uh, City Hall Thursday afternoon. Okay, anything else? Should we wrap up? Let's is wrap the mayor up. meeting tomorrow morning at 8.30? It is. All right. Move, move to adjourn. Let's do it. All right, we are adjourned. Good evening, good day.